Hello there. Don't have a good day. Have a great day. Talk to me, Goose. Precious. You steal the Declaration of Independence. Why so serious? I could do this all day. Are you watching closely? Welcome everybody to the One Ed Film Podcast. I'm your host Seth Mossberg, and today I got my girlfriend Ellie with me today. I'm real. She is real. I keep talking about her like in a <laughs> vague sense, but here she is. We're going to be talking about Sound of Freedom today. A good movie, but somewhat controversial, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But I want to hear your initial thoughts. I mean, initial as much as we saw it two weeks ago. Yeah. But what did you think of it? What did you like? What did you didn't like? Yeah, I thought it was a really good movie. My first thought was, I I don't think I could say it was an enjoyable movie. Hmm, okay. I, I, I didn't say like, like it wasn't fun. I, I don't think I'd want to go again because it was really, really heavy. Yeah. And so it was like a good movie and I enjoyed it. No, I it was entertaining. I'll say that. Okay, yeah. But I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, it's a morally heavy movie. It's a well-made movie. It's a lot to take in though. And it's one of those that I know you would say is more along the lines of just because it was so hard to watch, even though it was good. The, the not necessarily the cons outweigh the pros, but it, like, it is a lot to watch. It was just hard to watch, and it was well done, and it was interesting. So yeah. I was engaged the whole time, but I also had tears in my eyes for about 90% of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was well made, for sure. The problem is that a lot of people just aren't probably expecting what it's going to be all about, and you realize stuff about yourself, about the world, that just isn't supposed to be normal honestly and it's gut-wrenching to watch and it's they did a really good job I, I was taught this in film class to portray evil without showing it to to use themes use indirect dialogue or just the way cinema is made like how you can see a thought yeah. working in someone's head to show either their thoughts or the evil or whatever so like you can make a movie about child trafficking without showing any of it or doing any sin mm -hmm. uh, while making it I mean, you don't need to see any of it that would be illegal but it <laughs> it, things, it yeah. still made it heavy mm -hmm. and it made it really good to to bring to light some of the things that not everyone is aware of and i think that's something that this movie does really well with just how it was written and made and mm -hmm. all that stuff to to make it real and mm -hmm. show the impact of it on people's lives like tim ballard and the people who worked with him mm -hmm. like how difficult it was to act like these people and, and put up a front and, and be fake with them in order to, in the end, have good come out of it. Right. And it was hard enough to watch that I even heard some interviews with Tim and he said he couldn't watch it because it was that it was that traumatic and re-watching mm -hmm. that stuff because they made it look so real without actually showing anything. And you could see the fear in the kid's eyes and it's just yeah. really hard. And sometimes movies can be like that. It, more of the themes are harder than actually seeing something. Like, right, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to say I don't have trouble watching a movie like, let's say, Hacksaw Ridge where there's a lot of war stuff stuff but a movie like this where you don't see anything you just understand it mm. is probably harder to watch than something like a war movie mm, yeah. and one thing i would say about this movie is that it's not a christian movie mm. <laughs> she had to think about that for a sec i would say that yes angel studios made it angel studios kind of does on the edge where it can be either or like there were some swear words sure it, that's not a pure flicks movie pure flicks is mm. kind of for baby christians but for homeschoolers <laughs> <laughs> hey but it's not a pure flicks movie it's just like we said it before it's a heavy movie but it also doesn't shove the gospel down your throat mm. it's a it's a christian themed movie where it can have a lot of themes the tagline is god's children are not for sale that's obviously christian themed but a christian movie does not need to be the gospel just to be a christian movie there are a lot of good ones and i think we'll do an episode on <clears throat> the difference between good a good Christian movie and a bad Christian movie. The ones that irk me. They're not bad. They're just not well made. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. Movies like Jesus Revolution or I Can Only Imagine or movies like that that are really good. They don't need to have the main character explain to the antagonist what the gospel is sure. by the end of the movie. Yeah. It just shows how important the Christian principles are mm -hmm. to these people. Yeah, similar. Just showing the impact of the actions without actually... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Showing the actions. Exactly. Very, very different areas, but yeah. same idea. This is just a fun fact that I found when I was listening to some podcasts, mm -hmm. but Jim actually, the actor, improvised the line about saying better millstone be wrapped around your neck and thrown into the sea than mm -hmm. if you hurt one of these little ones. 
Yeah, and the, the opening scene with the, mm-hmm. with the dealer. Which was a really cool scene, and mm-hmm. how he kind of like mumbled it under his breath, and it's all spooky. But that actually was Tim Ballard's kind of mantra as he <laughs> was doing that. And I, I don't actually believe that that's the right context for that verse, but yeah. still the whole point is like, that was improv. And he didn't know that that was his kind of life verse, and yeah. he just said it. And so it's kind of a cool moment that yeah. dove into the character, and I don't know, it could have been Holy Spirit, but I'm not going <laughs> to jump to conclusions. For sure. Yeah. Now, there's a thing about this movie that has been going around a little bit. Controversy. Controversy. There is a lot of anti-trafficking companies or people coming out and saying that it is a not. It's a movie that's not worth seeing for various reasons. Some say it doesn't portray the actual events correctly. Some say that the actions of an anti-trafficker are embellished and dramatized. And that's fair. I don't think that that discredits the movie at all. It isn't a documentary, so it we don't we shouldn't expect a exact representation of what happened in mm-hmm. Ballard's life. Uh, in a documentary, it would be rated R. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And actually, interestingly enough, I believe Ballard has a documentary type of media coming out soon about a recent... I think they even have a part two, like a, a second movie. Coming yeah, out. there's other stuff in the works, but when it comes to a movie, it kind of needs to be dramatized to make it mm-hmm. interesting. Right. Like, yes, these stories were larger than life already, mm-hmm. and that's the point of movies, is to make larger than life stories or make life seem bigger and more important than it actually is sometimes because life can be pretty boring but when you're basing it off of a a true story then you you do have to take some creative liberties and i Mm. think they did okay i don't think any of their changes change the core of the story yeah as much as the anti-trafficker people have the right to criticize it for not being accurate i don't think it's like i said i don't think it discredits it and makes it less important and riveting like they they say that there's more than just foreign kids being taken like sometimes it's american kids it's it's not just in central america or it's maybe the i think the numbers of the island raid were a little bit different i don't think those are things to be hung up on but yes Mm -hmm. there is something to be said about embellishing a story and maybe using it for for money but i don't this is where the controversy comes in because people are saying that ballard is uh bringing awareness for a good reason like it's bringing into people's lives a lot more of a actual like story like when you say it's a true story then people are going to say wow this is this is crazy and Mm -hmm. then with the the lines at the end with the just explaining what ballard is doing all like the where they are now at the end of the movie and then just knowing that it was at least based on a true story just makes it more real so then the details aren't really that important Mm -hmm. unless you're making say a documentary right I think there were a lot of things in there where they were saying that Ballard was embellishing the story himself, and so he was just telling it all from just making it up to make himself look better. But based on a lot of the interviews I heard from him, he doesn't seem to have that kind of mindset unless he's a really, really good liar. But even then, he was giving credit to his wife for a lot of the things. Like, they even, like, tried to portray him as this superhero, and his wife actually was the one who was like, you need to stay. And she was the one who, at the end, was like, we need to adopt a couple of these kids. And so his wife, they were a team through all of this, and she was egging him on, and they didn't actually show that. They showed her saying, like, yeah, you should go. But aside from that, she was, like, not in the story. And she was actually, he says, a huge part of his story and the reason he actually stayed. So, not to, like, girl power, but, you know, it's like... (laughs) No, it's how they, like, compliment each other and how she supports him. Yeah. Proverbs 31 woman. Yeah, there you go. And there's a little bit of discrepancies with something that has happened with Ballard leaving OUR recently, Mm -hmm. especially during the premiere of the movie, but still doing promos for it and then starting his own company. Like, there is an article that we'll link in the description of just some research that they've done to that a certain person has done that kind of digs into fact versus fiction i think that's always important especially when watching movies discerningly is like if it is something along the lines of a based on a true story that to know the real story but also like there's there's something to be said about doing that research so that you can know the tr- like you we wouldn't be researching the story right if the movie hadn't been made so yes it's good to find the truth and maybe there's some sad news in that Research, Mm -hmm. like Ballard leaving his own organization, but then you know the truth instead of being Mm -hmm. ignorant. So do your own research. Make sure you're not taking it just at face value. Yeah. I think another thing is you mentioned that it doesn't cover all of human trafficking, and that's like one thing that people were really upset about because they're like, well, there's a lot more complicated issues than actually just like snatching kids. And they said that's a very small fraction of human trafficking, but it still happens. And I think this isn't being talked about by a lot of people because it's just uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. 
And so just the fact that they're bringing it out into the light, sure, it's a very small fraction, but it's still, like, one of his things that Tim Ballard says a bunch is do it for the one, do it for the one kid. You're trying to save real people. It's not just percentages and numbers, but... I do think that the pros outweigh the cons of this mm-hmm. movie. Like, I've had enough talking about the controversy. Like, yeah. yes, it's true. Maybe there's some incorrect so things that the movie portrayed, but I don't think it changes the whole point, is no. to bring awareness. And what's crazy about this movie is the numbers. Like, I think because Angel Studios does so well with marketing, they've made the movie free. Like, they've done a pay-it-forward system mm-hmm. so that people who haven't seen the movie and don't have the money or budget to can go see it for free. I know that a lot of wealthy people have given millions to this to to buying tickets for other people like Mm -hmm. if you don't have the money you can just go see it through angel studios and they do that with the chosen too like make sure you can see the chosen for free even though it's a very expensive show and the hard part is the spiritual warfare that seems to be going on as well there have been a number of stories of people going to a theater to see it Mm -hmm. and it kind of doesn't go right like you're not usually kicked out of a movie theater because Mm -hmm. the ac doesn't work or because one thing or another like Mm -hmm. there there's a big push against this movie from the culture and it's it's scary that sometimes like big names are coming out and talking against it because it's it one yes it's uncomfortable but i don't think that's enough to say something against it like Mm -hmm. it's one thing to not talk about and ignore it which is what most people do but speaking against it shows signs of spiritual warfare i think yeah i think one thing that kind of is a red flag is that you're seeing an issue that is so universally seen as wrong most people who have any moral conscience are going to say it's wrong to take a child yeah for any reason Mm -hmm. and then on top of that just the horrors of this movie so you'd think that people would be on board for this problem but there are a lot of people just bringing up all these conspiracy theories and all these other issues that they have like little minute details that they're throwing and saying no this is a terrible movie for these reasons and it's going to cause problems it's just really like broken you can see that there's something else going on here and i don't like spiritual warfare just in general talking about it i don't like to say that that's what's going on 100% because obviously we know nothing about it. Like, I've been researching this for a couple of days. Like, literally, <laughs> the only thing that anyone has been able to come up with is just, we don't know. Sure. I think that's an okay thing to say, but we also have to keep in mind that it is real and it's dangerous. And yeah, there's a big deal about, like, you can't underemphasize it and just pretend it doesn't exist, but you also can't overemphasize it. I also think the devil does not want this movie to be seen. I think that's valid. It's It's... He wants it in the shadows because it it's showing the truth of things uh, that Satan loves. Yeah, the the hateful treatment of God's children, mm-hmm. whether children or young adults or adults. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's not just children. I guess it's that's what the movie focused on. But there's a lot more people in slavery like that, unfortunately. That's another thing you said. Slavery. This is real slavery. Yeah. Like modern day slavery that's mm-hmm. going on. Yep. And some people will say that slavery is the highest it's ever been, even compared to something like. before the Civil War when it was legal. I believe that is false, but it doesn't make it any less impactful that there's still people who are in the situation that, Mm -hmm. yeah, we wouldn't be talking about if it wasn't for this movie. Like, the point of this movie is to get people talking, and it has done just that, and Mm -hmm. it's great. So what do we do about that? What are we supposed to do as Christians? What do you think we should do? Should we do anything? Well, I think you can donate. There's donations to companies like OUR. I'm not saying to donate to OUR. I have not done research on it. But yeah, there's, there's things like that. There's ways to get involved that we wouldn't have thought of before something like this. Like, it's it's something that we can be doing. We can obviously pray, but mm-hmm. prayer works. Or even donating to Angel Studios to give some free tickets out. I don't think it's in theaters for that much longer. So while it is, go see it. Whether you can pay for a ticket or you can claim a free ticket. Don't claim a free ticket if you can pay for it. That's kind of a jerk move. Mm-hmm. But yeah, getting the word out. It's t- it's number 13 in the box office yeah, for it's 2023. It's, yeah, I actually wrote down the budgets that it was $14.5 million budget. Which is a cheap movie. $163 million in so far. far. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like I said, number 13. It's over Mission Impossible, I think. Yeah, and that was a good movie. <laughs> yeah, it was. I think it's because of the marketing, and I think they did have done a great job with pushing that and all. One thing I want to say about donating is I'm I'm more of a skeptic. Okay. I'm a little bit cautious when it comes to donating to causes that, especially with people, are pushing it in my face. I think yeah. that some of that's just, like, the way I grew up and being in a public school, and I just don't trust people. I grew up <laughs> in the cities. But I think it's important to give money, and we don't want to just hold on to it. We are called to give to the needy, and we're called to give freely but also don't be a chump 
like actually look into where your money is going and see what these causes are and do your research before you start throwing money at things thinking yeah. you're going to fix the problem single-handedly because sure. we don't know what they're going to do with this money and a lot of people can play off of your emotions yeah so long story short the movie is good the movie is really good it yeah. may be inaccurate but i think it's with the greater message and you don't look at the little details it's still a good movie go see it if you can if you want to either donate to angel studios or claim a free ticket if you don't have the budget for it you go to angel.com slash freedom throwing that out there i'm not <laughs> promoting it you're not sponsored i'm not, I'm not sponsored uh, i wish and then uh, join our discord and let us know what you think of it that's the main place that we talk about stuff movies and geek out and all that stuff so join that follow our instagram and facebook and tiktok where we have some short form content all that jazz to get connected and have a great place to just have a good christian community of quality media and talk about the things we love let's get some more women in the podcast oh i didn't think <laughs> at least about on the that. discord <laughs> i didn't think about that you're our, you're our first uh, female co-host cool thank you guys so much for listening season two is going great we have a lot of things planned in the future so follow us wherever you're listening rate us five stars so that we can spread the word more we love you guys have a great day god bless deuces Thank you.